Okay. Hi, Claudio. How are you? I'm fine, Douglas. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're an author and I see you're also you do a video podcast and a audio podcast. Is that right? Yes. So um, I wrote uh, three books, uh, The Decadence of Our Souls, um, Water Entanglement and Crystal Cloud. Um, Crystal Cloud is the sequel to Water Entanglement. They are both um, science fiction and eco fiction um, novels related to you know water and environment. And um, I kind of branched out into doing more media uh, content, such as the um, Age of Water podcast, which I co-host with uh, Nina Montano, another uh, author. And uh, I host the spiritually inspired um, show, which um, tells people how to step on their spiritual path and explain to them that spirituality is also an important component of their life. Now, I was just going to bring that up, but OK, so you know Nina because she was on the show uh, a little while ago, a couple of months maybe. I don't know how long, but the same thing about and it was the first time that I had heard about uh, all of the water eco fiction. I'd never even heard that genre before. And I remember having a little joke with her about she had to have been a Pisces because everything that she was writing about was all related to water. So you're in the same genre with her. And if you co-host a show, then you obviously know her. What is the fascination with water with you? Um, I think it all started uh, after I finished my um, first novel. And while I was interviewed by, about my uh, next um, writing initiative, I said, you know what, I'll write about water. And I wasn't sure what I'm going to write about water, how I'm going to include water in that particular plot. Um, but I had an interesting idea later on when I made water a active character of my uh, novel. So in, in Water Entanglement, uh, water is quite um, alive. That This is the, the coat on the, on the back of the, the book. When we will understand that water has memory, water is alive and the time for her to awaken is now. So I use the concept from quantum physics to awaken the water um, and make her a structure, a perfect structure where she understands um, everything that happens around her. Because science lately um, proved that well, there is an energy field within the, uh, around the, the water molecule which encapsulates and gathers um, absorbs everything around um, the water, everything around the environment, her environment. So in my opinion, and I think in other people's opinion, um, everything what, that happened in uh, the Earth history is encapsulated in the molecule of water. And all we have to know is to how to read, how to decrypt, uh, decipher uh, that uh, message. And this is what uh, I tried to do in uh, Water Entanglement and then later on in the sequel, uh, Crystal Cloud. When you say that the history of the Earth is all contained in the molecule in the water, are you talking about like a time capsule type thing? Pretty much, yes, like a time capsule because we are water. Uh, the air we, we breathe in um, has humidity, that means water. There are... Um, flying rivers above the Amazon, that's water. And we know about the humidity in the, in the Caribbean and uh, in the southern um, uh, countries. It, we have the oceans, we have the, the rivers, the streams. Um, the forest um, cannot survive without water. So water is everywhere. All we have to do is to um, have reverence towards water and understand how to, to behave. And again, in water entanglement, I, I use uh, the actions of uh, the awakened water as a punishment for, for our uh, misdeeds. Uh, I think human beings have abused water for centuries. And should we be concerned that we're going to run out of water? Some people consider that uh, there is no finite um, quantity of water on our planet. And it's a recirculation system which will bring the same quantity back. Uh, but due to you know monocultures, due to um, climate change and other human activities, uh, water is going deeper, or and the reservoirs and the aquifers are being uh, depleted at a um, very fast rate. And everyone is aware of this. There is no novelty about <clears throat> what I'm saying. But there are areas in and countries uh, around the world which have longer 
droughts and the other countries which have, you know, storms and um, uh, all kind of uh, rain related uh, phenomena. But that's water, that water is not enough to, you know, to replenish the, the aquifers and that water has to be treated in order to be consumed. Uh, at this point, we don't have a effective technology, at least as far as I know, to uh, desalinize um, ocean water and use it for human cons uh, consumption, at least not at the level where the cost, because again, uh, business people are looking cost-profit uh, ratio and scenario. Um, so until that technology is brought down to um, common sense cost, I don't think they will implement it at a large uh, level all around the world so we can uh, complement the um, lack of underground water with the one obtained from uh, desalinization. I think that's sort of a uh, common problem with any newer renewable energies at this point is that people, that's the first complaint. If, it's, if it costs more than oil, they're not interested. And it's still cheaper to get water from freshwater sources than to try to desalinize the oceans, yeah? Simply because of the cost. Yes, and it happened with the wind and solar uh, technologies when they're very, uh, very prohibitive. Now they are quite uh, cheap and they can um, be implemented by regular consumers. Um, and also with uh, water, we have to understand that we have the big uh, bottling companies like Nestle. Uh, which take uh, over small uh, cities which have uh, consistent aquifers and then they deplete the aquifers and they ship the water all over the world for a huge profit. Um, so we have to have a balance uh, between what we consume and what we, we pay for water. Um, and I don't think this is um, something which will be um, resolved anytime soon because no matter how much evidence we have, um, usually the corporations and the profits is uh, what uh, prevail. Let's go back to your books for a second. So you're incorporating um, the biology and the ecology into fictional stories? Yes, and uh, the sequel in uh, Crystal Cloud, what I do, I, I take um, the, the crystals, uh, which are implants on our cornea and water. So water, um, structured water, pure water, which has this, um, let's say, as we mentioned before, the history, the, uh, the imprint of what's going on around it and filters through the uh, cornea, uh, with the crystal implanted in the cornea and which is connected to the pineal gland. Uh, the pineal gland will act as an antenna, um, awakening us as well, our consciousness. So I'm taking the water, the environment, then into the health um, system uh, where we can heal ourselves and heal our bodies with crystals, with this combination of crystals and, and water, because they are all creations of, of God. They are divine creations. They are pure. Um, we know crystals, uh, people can heal with the, the crystal vibration and also for millennia, um, people healed with uh, less water and um, water from um, sainted uh, locations. Um, so I, I take these two elements, I combine them, and people start healing themselves. They can start um, uh, connecting to the crystal cloud. Again, I introduced this uh, element of uh, crystal cloud in, uh, floating in, in the air, and they make a, a mesh of uh, crystals all around the globe, uh, away from the government uh, control. It's just for people to communicate freely and also uh, reach another level of, of consciousness. And when they reach that level, they understand that there is more to life than just um, instant gratification, than accumulating um, goods like you know, more houses, more cars, more clothing. Um, and they start living their life fully. Do you think that the indigenous peoples in the world, the native Americans and the Aboriginal peoples in Australia. Do you think they have a better concept of this than Western people do? Oh, for sure. And I talk about this concept uh, on my uh, show all the time. Uh, I invite my guests, which are shamans or energy healers, 
and some of them were adopted by indigenous uh, tribes he either here in North America or in uh, South America. And the experiences they had with uh, these shamans are just unbelievable. Um, and um, they have knowledge which uh, we should have tapped into a long time ago. And we should listen to them because regardless if they don't come under a specific religion, um, the knowledge is more important than a brand. I am you know, Christian or I am Jewish or I am um, Catholic. It doesn't matter when it comes to the knowledge this indigenous um, tribes uh, accumulated over the, the years, the thousands of years, is just unbelievable. Um, they didn't, uh, you know, they used water in their readings. They used certain plants to, to connect with uh, the divinity and read the messages and lead their communities to, to a better um, living. So for sure, we have to listen to them. And recently, uh, I heard that some of us in the, in the Western world are you know, turning our thinking and our, um, we are taking our uh, wisdom from them. We, we listen to them. We are getting down to, you know, we go to the jungles and we follow their um, tradition. We get into these plant medicine ceremonies. We open ourselves and we surrender to divinity um, and we become wiser. So slowly um, and with, with faith, our consciousness will go to a level where we can influence those around us and bring the indigenous cultures back to uh, where they were before they were decimated. How many books have you written now on this subject of water? Uh, on water, at least anywhere between 15 to 20 uh, books for my research and also novels, which are not, you know, scientific papers. They just, um, they use their, the authors use their imaginations the same way I used on when I uh, wrote mine. But it's a fascinating uh, subject that I'm sure more books will be written on, on water. Is there any crossover with your audience or the, the readers of your books? In other words, okay, somebody buys your book and if they were going to buy another genre style of book, would it be science fiction that they would probably be the next one? Um, yes, or they can buy, let's say, um, someone by Margaret Atwood, the, the trilogy, the Matt Adam uh, <clears throat> trilogy, which also talks about the environment and, and water. And that is a pure science fiction, eco-fiction um, trilogy. But again, the publisher was smart enough not to label it as such, so people will go and buy it, especially uh, by an author like uh, Margaret Atwood, which is very famous. And there are other science fiction authors um, uh, which uh, wrote um, this type of eco-fiction uh, books. Um, so I think it's a, it's a genre which has developed or a niche within the science fiction, <coughs> fiction um, uh, which has developed in the last maybe 10 years. Well, one of the topics that Nina and I got into was how many different genres there are, because when I was growing up, there was about five and now there's about 500. And are you self-published or do you uh, you go through a publisher? My first book was uh, self-published uh, and then I found um, a hybrid publisher in um, Ohio. And um, he took over my first book as well, republished it. And um, both um, Water Entanglement and Crystal Cloud are published under the same um, uh, publisher. Well, Claudio, we do have to wrap this up. We've run out of time. Can you give out your website, please, so people can come see you, check you out? My website is www.claudiumurgan.com, my name, in one word. Um, they will find information about my um, uh, show. Also, both uh, or all three books were already translated into the Romanian language, so the Romanian readers can find them on the internet and they can read them on their native language. Um, so any anything, they can find them on any uh, book uh, uh, book platform like Amazon and iTunes and uh, Barnes and Noble. Okay, great. And you said that uh, there are links to your podcast and video podcast on your website. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, and they they can also listen to the audiobooks uh, as well on Audible and iTunes. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you. Thank you and, very much. Uh, best of luck.